So hello, welcome back to NVN London and welcome to another edition of What's in the Bay today. However, while we're going to show you what is in the bays today, we're going to touch on a potential game-changing project for this car and something really quite exciting for the channel. You see, a minute ago we had a walk and talk with Affa, who is our paint ninja down here at NVN London, because we were speculating as to whether it's worth applying paint protection film on the DBS. And I know you are screaming at the screen right now going of course it's worth it look at it however some things have unfolded and it's made us question what is the direction that we should go with this car now it's not a coincidence that this car just so happens to be parked next to this car probably doesn't take too much of your imagination to potentially work out what i'm thinking here Okay, as great as this arrangement looks, Appa needs to show us the nitty gritty. So we're gonna pull this car out and get the light on it for you. Also, it acts as any excuse to see what this V12 sounds like. I really miss this thing, Af. It's great. It's been here for a, a few months. The idea being that we were going to give it the Afa treatment, the MVN love and TLC. That's uh, right. Obviously, come down here, correct the paint, PPF, onwards with the road chip trips, and join the car sharing it Basically, with these guys. Yeah. However, however, what did you find? Uh, okay, so we can start from the front. Yep. It looks like I mean without. Obviously, a torch going close up to the front, it looks fine until we put a torch and then we find out that the front end is quite peppered with stone chips um, to the point where even with machine polishing, uh, a cup, you know, trying to do stone chip repair. You think it's I, beyond that? It's beyond that. I, th I think we're at the point where a respray to the front end would be more beneficial than actually going through the whole process of um, polishing it, touching stone chips on the front end as well. Right. Um, and going to the side of the vehicle, stone chips, I mean, road rash. Oh, man, yeah. Here, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And that okay. carries on. I can feel it. Side skirts, rear arches. So the first time we walked around this with Afro earlier, yeah. it was basically like, in my opinion, yeah. maybe you should spray that bit. So then we went to the next panel and you're yes. like, it's probably worth spraying that bit too. Yep. That was a theme that continued kind of around the car. And even panels where you could probably get away with it, the panel next to it, you recommended spraying and then you'd have to blend it in to the other panel. So it got us thinking. It got us thinking. If we're gonna go to the degree of spraying this car, yes. and it just so happens, <laughs> yeah. but in the journey since we bought this car, we've developed our own Lennox Green, with Aston Martin, which you conveniently see on the DBX here. Now, we went around this with Afa not yeah. so long ago. We had the depth gauge on it. That's uh, the, the clarity of this paint. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's it fabulous. So a bit of backstory for anyone who might not be familiar. Uh, we were honored to be invited by Aston Martin to uh, have our hand in a collaborative design project to uh, make a special edition DBX, which would ultimately become available for sale around the world. This is the result of that project. And the big feature, or one of the big features, was the paint, which the technology of it started life as a Valkyrie exclusive paint option. And I sort of did the best bargaining I could with <laughs> Marek Reichman to say, is there any way we could please use that tech on our car? We managed to get that passed. The significance of it is, it was literally designed to highlight and show the sculpture of a surface. Of course, and it does. I mean, and this thing. Oh man. I mean, it's, you, I've not seen anyone who sat in front of this and go, nah, 
you know, I don't it's, like it. It's, it's universal. It's just such it's a gorgeous such a shape. It's a timeless shape as well. And I think the, as the years go by, the older this car gets, the more beautiful it becomes. Yeah. Um, uh, and this with this color, game stopper. So what really excites me is this. This is really yes. a big part of the project. It was like this vintage and antique bronze finish to translate some of that over to oh, this. Man. I mean, awesome. would you mirror it so, I mean, for example, on this car, on the DBX, yes. these are in black. Yes. I mean, when this is Lennox green, maybe that would look good in black. Or do you or, go full baller and just make these antique, like antique bronze? I would go bronze. Bronze strakes. Bronze. Bronze vents. Carry it on. Bronze mesh on the on the bonnet. I mean, it could. Oh, you could go all out. I mean, even with the interior wheels. Interior well. hardware. Oh interior. man. I mean, there's no more of an iconic gear shifter than that thing. Yes. Could you imagine if you anodized that a similar bronze it to would tie look. it all in? I mean, there's so much you can do to personalize. I'm going for it, car. man. I'm telling you, this go is. All out. I'm, I I'm going really for go it. All out. I've already made my mind up. I'm too excited about it. I think, yeah. honestly, I think this body shape oh, with that paint beautiful. would just be ridiculous. Even the wheels, you could go. Would you, would you diamond cut and put a bronze oh, fascia on? Oh, without a doubt. Or would you do the whole thing bronze? It's getting, this is where it's, the comments come in, to be fair. Even the cat down <laughs> to the calipers. This is happening. I'm going to, yeah, I need to find a way. Oh, without a doubt. Without yes. a doubt. So anyone out there, anyone out there who's interested in uh, perhaps getting involved in this as a project, let us know, seriously, comments below. It's probably a big job. It, yes. This is, pro this is, I mean, when I say probably, this is a substantial strip down oh, in order to repaint this thing properly. Glass out, strip back to bare carbon out. and metal. Yeah. Uh, even maybe engine out. I mean, a big job. A demarriage. Yes. A divorce, as it were. Yes, yes. <laughs> divorce of engine, drive so train. Do it, do it properly. Mate, I'm going to lose sleep over this one. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got that big question out of the way, which I reckon we're probably gonna end up going for. Uh, let's continue with what's in the bay today, beginning with this Grigio Ferro 812 Superfast. Uh, what's interesting about this is we get lots of Grigio Silverstones, Titanio, even a Canale Diffusile, which is a sort of Canon gray car we had in not so long ago. But this Grigio Ferro, this is a really rare silver, effectively. It's a sort of graphite gray. But it looks fantastic. Uh, great with these matte black contrasting alloys, this yellow pinstriping around the external carbon and the sort of Kremer in interior. It's quite a unique spec that, but very cool. Always great to have a good old 911 in here. Now this, I want to talk about this because by chance, the Mulsanne, obviously it's now out of production. We don't know if they're going to replace it, supersede it with whatever, but when these cars were being made, this was basically a full-blown Mulliner job. They were sort of hand-welded in their own department within the Bentley factory and crew. It was literally on its own production line. Very specialist thing. They were sort of started, I think, at around 260 grand and were easily 300,000 pounds with options. Today, you can get a one with, quote, decent miles on it for, I'm not joking, like 60 grand. <laughs> it's absolutely unbelievable how much car for the money you can get one of these things for and it and it is still is as refined today as the day it launched it is literally like riding on a bed of air but in terms of road presence i mean even though it's a car look how tall it is look at the roof line it's almost as tall as me it's kind of like a car suv almost it's so big now don't get me wrong infotainment and stuff inside not so up to date you can tell by that really small screen and maybe there's someone who can retrofit apple carplay i don't know but has a platform to swan around in, particularly if you fancy being driven in it. Phenomenal value right now. Speaking of phenomenal value, this thing for me, the original McLaren MP4-12C, uh, this was a Ron Dennis car. This was the early days of McLaren automotive as we know it now. And this is, you can think of this, that went head to head with the Ferrari 458 when that launched. Uh, two different approaches. It's a 3.8 liter flat plane crank V8. And it was very clinical when it launched because it launched against, against one of Ferrari's greatest ever cars, the 458, which had the naturally aspirated V8 in it. It was a, a little bit subdued in, in comparison in terms of theater, but performance and speed, even today, this thing also nine years old, ballistic. Now then, for one of the model years, and I'm not sure specifically which year it was, 
Do you remember the 12C had the swipe to unlock? Basically had an iPhone feature on it where if you run your hand under the door like that, that's how the door unlocks. So check this out, look, no button, nothing. It is literally an invisible unlocking mechanism that sits under the paint. It's incredible. They haven't done it since. Um, I heard there was some feedback from clients that said when they wanted to get in their car, say for example, you've been driving this during the winter. This is quite a fairly decent sill and there would be dirt and rainwater would gather under here. And then when you swipe to unlock, you would literally wipe a load of dirt off underneath this sill. But I don't know. I think it's a, a worthwhile trade-off just for the unique interaction with unlocking your door. And then if you take a look inside here, I mean, you know, it's, it's a bit dated, but there's something about this car as a platform. I think it's come full circle. Now these took a massive dive um, a few years back. I remember seeing one of these on the market for about 65 grand, which when you look at it now, the value for money is exceptional. I don't know where they sit now, but I do think this being under Ron Dennis, the notoriously precise CEO of McLaren. There's something about it actually where I know they had their problems, but actually the build quality on these is phenomenal. This particular car, I sat in earlier, it feels tight. Everything about it feels very well put together. And I think in years to come, this is the genesis of what we now know as McLaren Automotive. So very cool to have it in here. This is also a launch car as well, so that's cool. Uh, just to have a sneaky peek under here. I reckon this is a Ford GT. Let's have a quick look. Oh yeah, yeah it is. Very cool indeed. It's always nice to have one of those in here. Look at the stance of it as well. When you stand back from it, you, without knowing what it is, you know that's a thoroughbred supercar under there. Uh, Vantage, always great to have some Astons in. Uh, those of you wondering why this is peppered in blue dots. Um, this is in for paint correction before it ultimately goes on to the paint protection film stage. Uh, we generally advise to get the paint as perfect as possible before you apply paint protection film. Two reasons. Uh, the whole point of this is to preserve perfection underneath the film. So what's the point of protecting something that is otherwise defective? But also um, PPF has this really annoying character trait of amplifying imperfections in the surface of the paint. So all of these little blue dots here uh, are areas of imperfection which have been identified by our team, which we will fix before ultimately doing a full paint correction detail and then applying paint protection film to it. But pff, great to see a Vantage in here. All right, on the way to this 430 Scuderia we'll share with you shortly. Always nice to have a GR Yaris in. Now come and check this out. This Scuderia, uh, it's been in here a few weeks because we've done some serious resto work on it. A lot of repainting going on, but the client wanted the factory stripes which were available at launch. So the team here managed to recreate the stripes using the exact dimensions from the factory blueprints of these stripes here. So it now has practically official scooter rear stripes on the scooter rear. Behold, not one, but two shark blue, brand new 992 GT3s. What's really cool about this situation is one is a manual and one is a PDK, which is cool in itself. But one of the things we thought would be nice to highlight, it's just how big 911s have become over the years. It's not until you position it next to an older generation like this 993 Carrera RS here, that you get a feel for the scale of how big these cars have got. So of course, modern tire technology, new gearboxes, revised aero, all of that of course is a massive contributor to these things being faster. But look at the stance of the thing, the size of the tires you can fit on it, the width of the track, everything about it, it's longer, it's wider, it's lower, it's stickier. Yeah, these things have really evolved and I just think it's great to set some context when you put generations apart next to each other. Okay, don't get me wrong, these are special cars, but now let's turn to the really special cars. So. Today, we are graced with a 599 GTO and a 599 SA Aperta. Now, the real keen eyed of you might notice that this one is a right-hand drive car. Now, the significance of this car is it's basically one of these, which is a 599 GTO, where the roof retracts, okay? They made 80 of these cars worldwide, that was it. And of those 80, eight of them, eight were right-hand drive then we have one of them right here to take care of. So to say we're honored to have it here is an understatement and even to witness one, even if it wasn't under our own roof, 
to even see a right-hand drive SA Aperta, this is thoroughbred unicorn stuff. It's just out of this world. This is interesting because you would think that this is the one that would perhaps be used less than this one. If I told you that this 599 GTO has 500 miles on it, you probably wouldn't believe me when it sat next to a SA Aperta with a couple of thousand miles on it. But such is the nature of this collector's world. But seeing one in black, both right-hand drive, the presence of this in black, Oftentimes in, in photos, uh, particularly through camera, black doesn't always show up a car so well, but in reality, in person, these two complement each other incredibly well. So it's coming here for some TLC. We're gonna give it the full protection because client is planning on continuing that journey of use. Yeah, it's just major to have th these two here. And what is incredible is they both sit in the same collection. So very cool indeed, if the owner's watching, Congratulations and thank you so much for trusting NVN with these cars. It's a real honor to have them here. All right, so there we have it. Another episode of In The Bay Today from NVN London. Uh, but this really, this project here is really setting me alight. I genuinely would, as always, love to hear your comments below. Uh, what tweaks and changes? Imagine if we went down this road. I'd definitely stay on this theme of Lennox Green with the sort of uh, antique bronze vibe going on, carrying that theme over from the badge. But imagine the other little details, the vents, the wheels, the brakes, the interior. Could we change the seat? It's, it's endless. Comments below, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we shall see you next time. Ciao.